Okay, so after you've gone to the challenging uh, data collection part of the lab, and you have your time in seconds, and you have your absorbance values over here, and you've recorded this into an Excel spreadsheet, what I want you to do is set up a chart or set up a table very similar to how I've set it up. Time, and then you're going to have crystal violet concentration in micromolar, log of crystal violet, 1 over crystal violet, okay? And these are going to deal with the different rate laws. And so the data that you collect will allow you to identify what kind of rate law your uh, reaction is undergoing. And what you're going to do here is after you've set this up, just like I did with the times here and the absorbance over here, in order to have it calculate for you so that you don't have to sit there and calculate every single concentration, which would be really annoying, instead you can set up a formula. And the formula that you're setting up has to do with the equation that you did before. So if you look back at your crystal violet standard curve, you have an equation over here. And this equation can be manipulated. If you manipulate this equation, because you, right now you have it as y equals mx plus b, if you manipulate this equation to get x by itself, what you're going to end up with is x equals y minus b divided by m, okay, which is your slope. So y minus b divided by m, well, y is the absorbance, b is that intercept, which is the plus number, and then m is going to be the number that comes before your x. So what you want to do is you want to set up an equation or a formula that looks just like this. You're going to hit equals, you're going to want to include lots of parentheses because it works better if you do this. So put one parentheses on this side. Then you're going to put inside of it the uh, column and row number that the absorbance is going to appear in. So in my case, it comes in as G13. So you type G13 and it will automatically make it like an orange color because it's pulling in that number from the absorbance. You're going to subtract 0 0.094, and the reason is because 0 0.094 is the number that is the intercept, the y-intercept. And then you're going to parentheses that whole thing, so that is done first, and then you will divide by 0 0.053, which is the slope. If you set up that formula correctly, when you hit enter, you should get a number that makes sense to your graph. So you're going to want to look at your graph. And you're going to want to say, okay, the absorbance over here is 0 0.611. So if I go over here and I go 0.611, I'm going to be pretty close to 10, which is what I've got. And that's exactly what you have. So that means you've set it up correctly. So now in order to use this formula to calculate every concentration all the way down, all you have to do is pull the values down. And it will populate all of your data from that point on. Okay, and you're going to do the exact same thing for each one of these. So what I have done for the second one is I have set up the log, the natural log, which comes in as L, capital L, capital N, and then you're going to uh, type the number here, okay, because this is your crystal violet concentration. So you can put it in parentheses and type in B13, which is where mine is, or if yours is in a different location, type in your number. And then again, you're going to scroll down and have it populate all the numbers. Finally, you're going to do a third formula, and this formula is literally going to be 1 over B13. And again, I'm going to grab this and I'm going to drag all the way down. This way, if you set up your chart like this, you actually have all the data that you need to plot every graph in order to determine the rate order for your kinetics reaction. In order to determine the rate law, all you need to do is select the data that you want to plot. So the first graph that we're going to plot is this one. And I'm not going to do this for every graph. You're going to do it. I'm just going to show you how to do one. So you're going to grab this data here. And the reason I set up time three times is so that you can just do that. Select your data. And then you're going to go under Insert and you're going to select chart. Your chart's going to plot up as a line chart, which we don't want. I want to instead select a scatter plot. Okay, 
So once I select the scatter plot, you can kind of see that this graph doesn't really look like a straight line. But that being said, I want you to continue doing what you're doing. Okay, so in this case, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go under Customize, and I'm going to set up all of my chart and axis titles. So this is Crystal Violet Kinetics. I don't really want all that. I'm going to Crystal Violet Kinetics. CV plus versus time over time. Okay, and then you're going to close that, or actually, oops, oops, that's under horizontal axis title. So instead, I'm going to leave this as time in seconds. Okay. Then you're going to go under horizontal axis title. Let's go under chart title and let's look at this. Okay, crystal violet kinetics, CV micromolar versus time. Okay, and then you're going to go under your vertical axis title. And for your vertical axis title, you only need CV and micromolar. Okay, so now it has put in all of your titles, and you're going to go under Series, and you're going to add a trend line. Now, we want to see if this is linear, so we're going to leave our trend line as linear. What I do want to show you is that if you change the type, you could change it to exponential, and you will notice that your graph looks much more like an exponential curve than a linear trend line. I want to leave it at linear because I want to, what I'm trying to do is to determine which rate order is my is my uh, kinetics reaction. In order to do that, you're looking for the chart that looks the most linear. So we're going to plot linear for each one. We're going to go ahead and add R squared, and we're going to go under custom, and we're going to add use equation. Again, the equation should populate, and you should have a negative slope here because that's what your first graph should look like as a negative slope. Your concentration is decreasing over time, which is exactly what you have. And you should have an R squared value. You will notice that our R squared value is not quite as good as it was for our standard curve. Okay? And what you will notice is that the one that is going to look the best is going to have the best R squared value. Okay? You're going to do this exact same process three times. You're going to use three different data sets. Okay? So this is the first data set. And then you're going to do time versus log, and you're going to do time versus 1 over CV. And each one of these graphs, I want you to plot a linear trend line, include the equation, and include the R squared. After you've done all three of them, you can then put all three of these, insert all three of these into your lab report. So again, I'm going to remind you that if you go under your untitled document, which I currently have, I can then go under insert and I can select a chart from Sheets, and I'm going to click on my Crystal Violet Lab, and I'm going to scroll all the way down until I get to the most recent one that I made and hit Import. Okay? And you're going to do that for each one of these charts, because all three of these charts, in addition to the standard curve, should be included in your lab report. And with that, we're going to stop.